we compound annually. So we start at time zero, and this is end of year one. Where's my roommate? I understood this earlier now. What do I have at the end of the year? 1.07. Right, 1.07. All right, now let's say I compound annually, oh. but I have payments, you know, okay. semi-annually. Okay, I got it now. Payments that you're paying or payments that you're receiving? That you're Wait, receiving. What are, oh, okay. Because remember what I'm actually getting here at the end of the day? I'm starting with a dollar, and I end up with 1.07. So really, this is my payment, and I get it all at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. So if I compound annually, but I get payments semi-annually, the thing to remember always is, I'm only compounding annually. So, I'm going to end up at the same place. It doesn't matter, you know, where my payments happen. If I get my payments halfway through the year, if I get a million little payments, if I get a payment every day, because I compound annually, I have to end up at a dollar oh seven. Yeah. Yes, true. Is everybody cool with that? Mm -hmm. All right. So now the question is, what would the interest rate be? If I had payments semi-annually. So instead of getting the you know, seven cents all at the end of the year, how much do I get if it was semi-annual? And the thing we need to figure out to get that is we need to figure out what's that effective periodic rate. Because it's going to compound the rest of the year based on whatever is subtracted. Right. Oh. So let's try a different version to make sure you guys understand the intuition there. Let's say I compound semi-annually. Now, if my so wait, annual so interest rate... Annual interest rate compounded semi-annually? Right. So is, if, is that what that is? Right. Let's do that one first, because that one should help inform this other one. If it's 7% annual compounding, but I compound semi-annually, what is my per period interest rate? It's not 0.035. Yes, it is. It is. Because I'm just compounding semi-annually. This is, this is for what? Compounding annual, semi-annually? 7% annual interest. Yeah. Right? But I compound semi annual. Okay. So my effective interest rate is actually more right. than just 7%. Because you're compounding. Are you cool with that? Year. Because oh, here's what happens. That'll give you yeah, bigger. Yeah, you have more. Yeah, that's what I was trying to. Yeah, because he, at this point, like. I'm at 103.5. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Got it. And if I take that forward another 3.5%, 1.035, I get to 1.0712. So it's oh. so, not 7.1, right? On 7.1. Yeah, so my real effective interest rate has now become 7.12 because I'm compounding semi annually. Got it, okay. All right, so let's go back to the other example where I'm going to compound annually, but I receive payments semi annually. All right, you know intuitively, no matter what happens, you're going to end up at 1.07. Yes, sir. You also know intuitively you cannot be at 1.035, yeah. right? Because otherwise, I get to 1 .3, you'll get more you're going to get more. <laughs> yeah. so, you, so you know offhand that your per period interest rate is going to be less than 3.5%, just in terms of checking yourself. So let's figure out what that is. The effective periodic rate equals 1 plus R over M raised to the M over P. M over P or M? Yes, M so over P. that's what we're changing. What? I don't know. Go with me. Go with me. We're going to prove it in one second. No, where's the P coming from? Just go with me. Go with me. We're going to prove it in one second. All right. So let's try it out. So, so, so concept-wise, before you continue. So this is the, so in terms of terminology, 7% is the, is the, is that the number? No, Annual nominal, rate. Is that the nominal interest rate? Uh, you can call it the nominal interest rate. And then what is the effective interest rate? The effective interest rate is the... That's what we're figuring out. It's we're what, we're figuring, we're figuring out. This thing's over here. Right, the per period effective interest rate. Per period effective interest rate. So what, what do you call the yearly effective interest rate? It's just the annual rate. We know the annual rate's 7. We're trying to figure out what's this per period rate. Okay. Okay. But per period is always considered effective. That's the term that is always used. Right. Okay. So we get 1.07 <coughs> divided by, and this is where the M and the P, you have to understand, the M is the compounding. Compounding. So we're compounding okay. annually. This is one. So again, that's one. And how many, how often are we doing payments in that compounding Twice. period? Twice. Oh, okay. That's what's not obvious. 
Because it's not in the Minus formula one. we were given. Because it's not in the formula sheet that we got. Yeah. And we're supposed I know. to know. I know. So that gets us 1.07 raised to the 0.5 equals 3.44 percent, only minus one. Yeah. Oh, okay. That makes sense because it's less than 3.5. And if you plug it in. And if we plug it in, we end up again at 1.07. Now let's prove that, to make sure you guys are 100 percent confident with this by changing it up and say, all right, we're not going to get our payments semi-annually. We'll get our payments all right, thank you. quarterly. All right, so if we get our payments quarterly, what's the formula? One, one plus seven. 0 0 0.07. 0 0.07 divided by one, still. one raised to the one over, four. one over four minus one. All right, so now just to get the intuition, 0 0.07 divided by four equals 1.75. So should our effective periodic rate be higher or lower than this? Um, rate divided. If we just took the 1.07 and just divided it by 4, oh, yeah, it should be less. Less. should be less. Let's try it out. So we get 1.07 raised to the 0.25 equals, when we subtract 1, 1.71%. 1 All right, now let's try it out. Raised to the 4 gets us to 1.07. So, if you so we end up at the same place. So the only, sorry? If we raise 3.44 to the 4, we'll get to 2, we get 0.7. Mm -hmm. Right. That's all I'm doing is you can just take, you know, 1.0344, and because you're just doing it to another period, you can just actually square it. Yeah. If you've got, you know, we've got four periods, 1.0171, I've got to do it four times. You know, here's one, two, three, fourth time. So I can just raise it to the fourth. And that'll get me to 1.07. So, so on the, like on a problem, wait, on a problem when you would see, you'd use that formula when you see that your compounding is at its like, annual, annually, and your payments are sooner. Yes. Okay. And you, and what you're looking for is you're trying to figure out what is that per period rate. Mm -hmm. That's the answer we're trying to solve. Is you know before when it was semi-annual, it was 3.44%. When it was quarterly, it's 1.71%. Yeah. So, question now. If we're told that it's actually 7% APL compound, compounded semi-annually, I'm going to find out that it's also two payments. So, you know, there's a formula that says I equals R over M. When do I know when to use this and when to use this order? I'll okay. When, when to use it. Well, look at this. Look at this, right? We said it was compounded. Now, if we say it's just... 7% interest rate, right? Yeah. That's the same thing as saying I equals R over M equals 7%. Isn't it big R? Okay, big R. Just check. Compounded, and how, if this is compounded annually, what's M? 1. Over 1. So let's try this way. I equals 7% equals, and now let's compound. This is annual compounding. This is semi-annual compounding, okay? I equals R over M. What's R in this case? Well, seven. You mean seven. R is seven, not I is on seven percent. R is seven. Which is R. Right. This is the We're looking for we're looking for I. Right, we're looking for I. Yeah. How many periods are we compounding? Um, two. Two. Yeah. Equals three point five percent. Yeah. Which makes sense because you're compounding semi annually. You're gonna get more at the end. Right. And so your actual effective interest rate, remember we did that somewhere else, yeah, ends up being more than 7. It's like 7.12%. Yeah, but I, so my question is, I hope I will know when to use this formula. Mm -hmm. or this formula. And the, key, the key thing is what? What, what are the key things? They're always going to give you annual rate. It just depends when it's compounding and when you're getting payments. Right. Remember okay. here, everything we did up here was compounding annually. Okay. When we got down here, we started asking, well, what if you compound at a different time period? Okay, so this, this, this is my take from it. If we were told it's compound, if we're given the period, and we're told that it's compounded semi-annually, but our payments are semi-annually, then we use this one. If we're told it's compounded um, semi-annually, and our payments are semi-annual, then we use this well, one. Would you even need the formula if your compounding is yeah. the same as your payments? You yeah, would just yeah, if your compound is the same as your payments, yeah, you, you, got to you, use got. It. you got to get it. But what if, so what if we're told semi-annually, <laughs> And we get paid, get paid four times. I guess how do we, we don't, I guess we use this one. So 
semi-annual be so what, what, if it's just this is more complex yeah. semi-annually and we've been in four, four, four periods then your r is still the yearly rate right so that would be let's write that one out seven percent semi-annually so if we did seven percent apr semi-annually one plus r we know r seven percent okay right That's and two, how many two days. here it was compounding annually so now what are you saying? It's compounding semi-annually? Two, yeah. So it's compounding semi-annually. Okay, four times one over four. Right. And remember we keep there, and you said four, it's two over four. Yeah. four, four, four right. minus one. Right. So remember, this is just, you know, how often are you compounding? And okay. we're compounding once per year before when we're <coughs> compounding annually, twice per year before. Got you. Is that cool? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you.